Today on Music Myths, I want to talk about one band in particular, a group that has more secrets and mythology than almost any other group of the modern era. Pink Floyd. Now, I'm not going to talk about any of those songs that sync up with movies or anything like that, because there's tons of that all over the internet. The first Pink Floyd myth I want to discuss is the one that revolves around their amazing yet underrated album, Live at Pompeii. The myth states that the live performance recorded in the ancient city's amazing amphitheater was only allowed to go forward if the band agreed there to be no fans present. Many state that this was due to the fact that local authorities were concerned about the well-being of the cultural site, and in the video, you see no fans present at all. However, the reasoning is is actually not true at all. The entire idea for the Live at Pompeii release actually came from director Adrian Mabin while he was on vacation in Italy in 1971. His vision was to have the band perform in an empty amphitheater, with the echoes and the moods and the overall visuals taking their music to the next level. So while the local authorities were certainly skeptical about any rock style band playing in the amphitheater, the fact that it was empty was 100% a choice of the band. The second myth I want to address concerns the stunning vocals found on the song Great Gig in the Sky from Dark Side of the Moon. Over the decades, countless stories have been created about just who this woman is and what possessed her to deliver such a phenomenal vocal performance. One very common story claims that she was a random woman off the street that the band found, or that she came into the studio, sang the vocals and left, and they never knew her name. And there's an even stranger version where people try and pass off the idea that the vocalist is an angel. Obviously, this myth is false. The reality is, the vocals on Great Gig in the Sky were performed by a woman named Claire Torrey, and you can hear her singing on a number of other hits throughout the 1970s and 80s. However, she actually almost didn't do the session as when she was asked to do it, she admitted that she wasn't a very big fan of Pink Floyd at the time, and she also had tickets to see Chuck Berry live the night she was supposed to record. The session was rescheduled, and after being played the track once, she was basically told by the band to just improvise the singing. Three takes later, the iconic track was completely finished, and she would later say that she didn't even know they were going to use the take until she heard it on the album after it was released. So while the vocals on Great Gig in the Sky certainly sound angelic in nature, Come on, folks, let's use a little bit of common sense. The final Pink Floyd myth I want to discuss revolves around the mythical character known as Publius Enigma. Was he a member of the band in disguise? Was he a clever marketing ploy? Or was he just an internet troll? Well, on many levels, this stands as the oddest piece of Pink Floyd mythology, as it represents both a very early example of viral marketing, as well as just a series of extremely cryptic messages that were abandoned before the entire puzzle was solved or resolved in any way. The veiled figure popped up on Usenet groups posting a series of messages that suggested that within the lyrics, music, and art of the band's division bell, there was a secret hidden message. After many fans started to believe and claim that this was nothing more than a hoax, Enigma's name actually appeared during the band's live set in the lights during a show in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Similar instances happened at other shows, and you can also find his name buried cryptically within the liner notes of their Pulse DVD, as well as the CD booklet to the division bell. But after a number of legal issues, the Pink Floyd news group was actually shut down without this mystery ever being solved in any way. Over the past few years, both David Gilmour and Nick Mason have stated that it was nothing more than a marketing ploy put forth by EMI Records, and that the band had very little to do with it. But in the end, the existence of this random character and hidden messages are absolutely there if you look closely. So those are the myths today. Be sure to be here every single Thursday as I delve deep into some of the greatest stories in music history. And be here every day for all the music news, reviews, and knowledge you'll ever need. Oh!